Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 through 7. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor of fornication and all uncleanliness and covetousness. Let it not be once named among you as become saints, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no whoremonger nor unclean person, nor a covetous man who is an idolater, have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Um, we have, uh, we just got done with chapter 4, and there were some reminders there. Remember the reminders? You know, get rid of your bitterness. Let him that stole steal no more. Um, wrath, anger, evil speaking, put it away from you. Uh, give no place to the devil. Be renewed in your spirit and true holiness. Now, again, I just want to remind everybody of something. The book of Ephesians is written to what type of people? Gentiles. No, Ephesians. there's Gentiles Christians. and... Uh, yeah, yeah, Christians. 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 Remember, in the early church, there was Jew and Gentile just about all the time. Because especially if it was a Pauline church, Paul would always go to the Jew first and then to the Gentiles. He would, uh, he would put on his... Uh, Pharisaical, rabbinic robes, you know, and he would go in and he would preach in the synagogue. Um, synagogues really didn't have preachers per se. Um, they were just laymen who would teach and preach and they would also take care of community matters in the, uh, in the local synagogue. Um, the temple was over in uh, Jerusalem, but there were so many different synagogues. One of the um, really cool, I'm, I'm kind of an archaeological nut, um, about 10 years ago they found the city of Magdala, you know, uh, uh, um, who am I thinking of? Mary, Mag Mary, Mary Magdala, Mary, yeah, Mary of Magdala, and um, we it's funny because there's so many spots around Israel um, that have some really, really cool significance. And sites in Israel are ranked A, B, or C. C would mean, no, that really didn't happen in this place, but people really like it. Um, it's like uh, if you go to Israel, you could go to the upper room in the book of Acts, except that they're really sure that that was built in the last, like, 1,200 years. So that's not the upper room, but um, many of our uh, Pentecostal and charismatic brethren, when they go, they want to be in the upper room, and they take them there, and, but, but it is what is considered a C site. Um, there are also A sites. We know for a fact, you know, the temple wall. You know, that's, that's something. Um, if you ever go, uh, you could go to Mount Carmel. Do you guys know what, remember what happened at Mount Carmel? Carmel? Elijah preached, fire came down from heaven. And what was really cool is up to a couple hundred years ago, you could go and you can actually see the fire that burnt up everything. I mean, the rocks and where, where it came down was there. And just in the last couple of hundred years, they built a nunnery on top of it. <gasps> you <Yeah>, ruin it. <laughs> and so that is considered an A site. There's also B sites, which they think probably maybe, but it could go either way. Okay, such as uh, Christ's tomb. There is one where they say yes, 
this is where it's at. And it's the official good old Catholic site, and it's a, it's a church that's run by nine different denominations, and uh, th they, all, uh, they all really hate each other. And so the only person that can be trusted for keys is a Muslim family. <laughs> As a matter of fact, if you go to the entrance, outside you will see a ladder. And the ladder is there uh, because a few hundred years ago, um, this one denomination says, we're not letting you go through our, our church to get to the rest. So they had to literally go up the wall, climb up in a ladder to go up to get to their place. So that's, it's just funny. Anyways, Magdala is one of the places where we know Christ has been, and they're unearthing the synagogue that's there, which is, uh, which is really cool. I'm sure I had a really great point when I was going through that. But anyways, there's a little scroll through history today. But, oh yeah, so when Paul wrote this, he wrote to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And so whenever he went to an area, he preached to the Jews first. And when, when the Jews of that synagogue, many believed, but believe it or not, many did not. And so they would eventually kick him out uh, because they did not accept it. And then he would take the gospel to the Gentiles, and they would start churches. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, over in this book is written to the Christians in Ephesus. Uh, it's one of the most, it's, it's a beautiful archaeological site if you ever go. Um, most archaeological sites, just a little side note, the only... They only do about 75% of the site, and they purposely leave many of it untouched. Um, that hopefully maybe better technology will happen, that, that they can uh, do more archaeological uh, digging without damaging things. But you can go there, you can, uh, I told you about the area where you can look down and you can see the marks of where individual churches kind of represented themselves on the sidewalk. And they all look like Remember that game Trivial Pursuit, where you had the little round thing and you know all the ledges? That's what each one of these things looked like, and it was it was just a reminder to people that hey, there's churches here because they were underground, and uh, there were churches in Ephesus. So he's writing to these people, and he, and he says in verse one, he says, "Be ye therefore followers of God. Therefore, be ye therefore, because." Verse 32, forgiving one another, even as Christ, uh, even for uh, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Because you are forgiven, because you are new, because you are completely changed. You may not realize this, but you are changed. Now we can stumble, right? I'm sick of stumbling. I am. If, uh, I'll be honest with you. There, there's probably better pastors out there that, that don't sin anymore, that don't think of wrong stuff, that don't, uh, that don't get uh, oh, angry, that, don't, that doesn't uh, really just want to gently tap somebody on the head with a hammer and uh, make them stop talking and things like that. Um, <laughs> but, I, you know, I'll be honest with you, I... I'm walking in grace with you. I really am. Uh, the, I think biblically many of the same standards that we see for our pastors, really the same standards that we're supposed to have for all believers. Um, and, uh, but a, a pastor is supposed to walk right. And uh, just like we're supposed to walk right. And, and Paul says... Be ye therefore followers of God. Because we've been forgiven, because we're new, because we have the new life, because we are, because of what we've been saved for, be followers of God as dear children. Now, what does following mean? Okay, I, I, let's, let's, let's try this real quick. Anybody ever heard of the game of Simon Says? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. Okay, let, let's play it right now, okay? Simon Says, lift up your left hand. Simon says, lift up your right hand. Simon says, put down your right hand. Put down your left hand. Simon didn't say that. Okay. 
Now, you, you, by the way, there's no more Simon Says. I was just doing this for an illustration. Sometimes we think that to be a follower of Christ, we're going to keep on stumbling and tricking on it, but if we don't pay attention to the right phrase, we're going to lose. That is not what this is teaching. It is so natural to want to be like our Father. It is so natural for our children to want to be like parents. Um, as adults, some of us have been horrified to think, oh my gosh, I became just like my father. I became just like my mother. My, my wife would be amazed that when, when I would take a nap with the kids, I would, I would fall asleep like this, and, and, and Dakota would also be asleep in the same way. And, and I would be doing something, and, and then the kids would, would follow along. I had a friend, um, a pastor friend, and his, uh, his son loved imitating his dad. And, uh, and he came in crying. It was, it was Sunday afternoon, and we just had a very, very cool baptismal service. And the son came crying, and he was just cut all over. And, you know, you, you know when kids are really, really crying, they're just... <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're just sucking, you know? And uh, and <laughs> and the dad's like, whoa, whoa, what happened? I was, I was, I was, <laughs> I was pretending to be like you. Okay, okay. Oh, oh, what happened? I was pretending to be baptizing. Okay. The cat did, didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> It's a natural thing. Those that we love, sometimes it's sports heroes. Sometimes, you know, Dakota, he, he, he watches a certain sports uh, basketball player and he, he likes to dribble or shoot or, or do something that they do. Things that we see, we try to imitate. It says, imitate, follow what Christ says as dear children, as beloved children. This word dear is the word beloved. Remember what Jesus, what, what, what was said about Jesus at his baptism from the Father? This is my beloved son. Wow. It's the exact same word, by the way. I think the writers wanted to make sure there was a difference between deity and us, but in reality, it is the exact same word. Isn't it beautiful? That God allows the same word he uses for his son to be used for his adopted children too. And so we follow him. Walk in love. Walk in love. As Christ also loved us. Why do you think he tells us to walk in love? Because we don't always do it. Because we don't always do it. Why do you think he says walk in love as Christ walked? Because some of us are really, really stubborn. I am walking in love. Right? Be kind. I am being kind. And there's reminders in Scripture that our level of holiness does not go out this way. You know, I, I'm, I'm better than you. Maybe not as good as faith. You know, not definitely not as good as E.B. You know, there's there's all different levels. But this is not what we're, 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 we're not supposed to be imitators of each other. We're supposed to be imitators of Christ. As dear children, walk in love like Christ loved us. How did Christ love us? You think you're not allowed to answer. How did Christ love us? He gave himself for us. He gave himself. We're not just talking about being... And by the way, let's talk about him just being crucified. Boy, weren't we undeserving? As a matter of fact, have you ever tried to do something for somebody and they're just being a pill about it? I remember one time, uh, about 15 years ago, there was this kid laying in the street, literally in the street, about 11 o'clock at night, and he... I, I came up to him, and he was drunk. I mean, he was just skunk drunk. Trying to help him get off the rope. And he's just cussing up a storm. He's calling me everything but nice. 
he's, he's flailing his arms at me. You win. If you would like to get run over, I guess this is, this is your fundamental right. <laughs> but that's not what Christ did. As a matter of fact, the way he loved us is he loved us and died for us, and he saved us even knowing what we'd be like after salvation. How does he love us now? Do you ever have to go to Christ over the same thing? Yeah? You need to love that way. By the way, how about this? You haven't gone to Christ yet about that thing. Does he withhold his love? Why would you go on? As dear children, and he gave himself for us as an offering for a sweet smelling savior. Now listen, we're God's child, and that's one of the reasons why we should walk in love. We're like him. Walking in love is part of this new nature. This is what we should want to do. Uh, can somebody quickly turn to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4, whose name is not Natalia or Ruthann? 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. And once you get to that verse, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. Could you read that out loud? Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these we may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through us. He seems to indicate that we've already escaped this world. Does it feel like we've escaped? No. But the reason why he says you are partakers of the divine nature. When you are born again, God's nature is inside of you. Now, these there's some new age weirdos that try to say, oh, God is love. I love, therefore I'm God. No, this is not what it's teaching. It's not teaching that we are gods. What's this teaching is that we're different. We are literally birth of God. We are God's children. That's why we should walk in love. Uh, two, we are God's beloved children. Again, this was the same phrase, dear children, beloved children, that he used for Christ. In the same way God loved Jesus, he loves us. That is unfathomable to me. I just have to take it by faith, though. And thirdly, we are purchased with it by a great price. He laid down his life for his friends and he laid down his life for his enemies. And it's a sweet smelling savor. In other words, this is a sacrifice that pleased God. And because of everything that Christ has done, we therefore, yes, we have a duty, yes, we have an obligation. But more importantly, I want my son Dakota to please me. I want my son to honor me. I want my son to obey me. And there's no doubt about it. Dakota, do I want all of those things? Yes. Okay. Now, do you want the same thing from your kids? Okay? Yes. Okay. Now, do you want them to do it because you told them or because they love them? Well, you want them because they love you, but you don't mind saying, all right, <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> right? So, when we are not walking in love, do you know what we don't look like? We don't look like his children. This is very important. Paul did not communicate with the Ephesians church and say, hey, you're not walking in love, you blew it, you're out, of, you're out of the club. You need to do something to get yourself back in. By the way, I think scripturally speaking, uh, the only way to get saved is by receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, amen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
It's not by works of righteousness that we do. Now, either you've received him or you haven't. If you lose that salvation, you don't gain it back by just repenting or saying you're sorry, because that's not exactly how you got saved in the first place. Right? He's got to be yours. When we... When we walk disorderly, we don't lose our salvation, but I'll be honest with you, the world, they don't view us as children of God. They view us as hypocrites. If you're not sure that the world would really think that, read any book that has a religious person in there, they're all nuts up. Watch any TV show that has somebody that's born again, they're all crazy. Any movie, they're all... See, the... And, and they portray them as hypocrites, or they portray them as... I mean, they're portrayed in ways that I'm like, have you ever even seen a Christian before? I don't understand what's going on. And yet, this is how the world portrays it, because they've seen it. And they've had enough religion... How many times have you heard that this is a Christian nation? I'm going to be honest with you. Nowhere in the Bible does it allow a nation to be Christian, only people. And I think we think that this is a Christian nation because we don't deliver mail on Sunday. And we have an official national church. Does it make us a Christian nation? Do you think our leaders... Take everything before God in prayer? Do you? Do you think our, our, our holy, godly Prime Minister Boris Johnson seeks God's face before every decision he makes? Now I know we like him because he's not the other side. Okay? But I'll be honest with you. I'm almost at the point now, and I want to be a good citizen, I want to vote when I'm supposed to vote. But all these turkeys are the same. They just fool around with my taxes a little bit differently. Uh, I'm going to continue. Verse 3. But fornication. Now remember, we're supposed to walk in love, right? We're supposed to walk in love as Christ loved us. But fornication and uncleanliness, and covetousness. Let it not be once named among you as become a saint, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. What is not walking in love? Verses 3 and 4. Fornication is the, the Greek word pornea. Uncleanliness is kind of Side by side with pornea, but it's the thinking. It's uh, looking but not touching. It is generally, I haven't done it because I don't have a chance yet. Why does he tell Christians not to do it? Because they were. Because they were. Can Christians do some of these things? Yeah. Yeah. Sure can. Now, I don't think they can walk in them. I don't think they can live in them. I don't think this can be their life. I.e., Christians can do stupid stuff, but uh, we have a good father. I, I'm going to assume you're an okay father, at least. See, all right? Okay. Can, can, now, not you two, because you two are perfect. But, like, uh, uh, Isaac and Jaden, they're bad, right? Yes, they're really bad. And they can get away with a lot of stuff, right? Jayden. For a while. Yeah. Jaden can do Oh, okay. <laughs> it all comes out. But Dad can stop it, can't he? Yeah. Now, he may not be able to change the inside because he's but a man. But he can say, I can put enough pressure that he'll stop it. That's what God can do. He's a good father. He can put the pressure on. He can stop. He, he, but it's internally. We can't walk in it. 
Think of a sin, think of an area in your life that you wish would just go away. And when you do it, you're grieved. Hey, that's the Holy Spirit. Because you don't want to walk in it. Well, the problem that I have is the person that just stays in sin for a couple of years, then they go, whoo, I need to walk like a Christian again. They come to church for about two, three, four months. Have you ever seen somebody like this? But because they're not truly born again, they go right back in it. And it's their life again. See, for a Christian, sin is the exception, not the rule. For an unbeliever, going to church is the exception, not the rule. And that's why on some of these things, you know, the, the very first thing when we think about sin is, first of all, we have to decide, and we have to realize, am I born again or not? And if I am, what's going on? And, and, and Paul's very, very clear here. These things should not be named among you. He says covetousness. It's just an uncontrolled appetite for something that you have. And it says, let it not be once named among you. Well, yeah, but this is just the first time I did it. Don't let it be once named among you. Yeah, but okay, this is the last time I'll do it. Let it not be once named among you. We belong to him. We don't belong to ourselves. I have to remind myself of this. This preacher has to remind myself that, you know what? Some of the things uh, that go on up in my attic does not even belong up there because I'm a believer. I'm a child of the king. And, and as... You know, some people always blame stuff on the devil. I, I'll be, I've never had blamed anything on the devil. I've been pretty, pretty able to do everything on my own. Uh, I don't even know if the world's very responsible for a lot of the stuff. But, you know, we do have three enemies, right? The world, the devil, and the, and the flesh. And I have to tell God, God, no, 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 no. This thought is not under your authority. Lord, bring it there, please. That's what we need to do. Because these things should never be once named among you. And why does he say that? Because it was being named among them. In Ephesus, where we're part about being a good religious person is that you go into the temple prostitutes. That's part of your religious service. Imagine living in a culture where just sexuality is everywhere. Aren't you glad we don't have that? And these things inundate a believer. And Paul says, don't let these things be named. This is not you. Walk in love. Listen, I promise you, when somebody's experiencing fornication, they're not walking in love. It is very difficult to witness with the individual that you're involved with that. With wickedness, it, it, it continues. With filthiness, that's obscenities. Uh, foolish talking is, is a beautiful uh, compound Greek word. Um, uh, foolish, moron, moros, moronis. And uh, talking, logos. No stupid words. Um, uh, moro logo, that, that's the word there, jesting. Um, our mouth should be used to give thanks. See, that's what it says nor foolish talking or jesting, which are not convenient. Why is it not convenient? Because it destroys your testimony. It destroys the very people that you really do love and you want to see them come to Christ. And instead of your mouth and your body being used for wickedness, it should be used to give thanks. was John Wesley. He was invited to go to a, a dance. Now, it amazes me that 200 years ago, people would be a little bit nervous about going to dances. They're like, no, oh, that's not very Christian. I look at them back then and go, wow, all that's wholesome. 
you know, I don't know. What changed? Them or us, right? But John Wesley was invited to a dance, and he went, uh, and he, he was invited, and he says, look, before I partake in anything, I pray. And he prayed, and he besought God's face, and the dance was done. And people repented, and people came to Christ. Our ability to give thanks and pray and praise, this is what should be rolling off of our tongues. Not those other things. Let us walk in love. Verses 5 through 7. For this you know, that no whoremonger. By the way, that is a word that uh, William Tyndale created. Um, no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things come up the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Well, here it is. He says, the very people that you are emulating. The very people, instead of being imitators of Christ, you're imitating things in this world. And these are the very things and the very ones that are being judged. What does it say? Verse 5. Have any inheritance in the kingdom of God. Now this doesn't mean that the person who was a whoremonger can never get saved. The person that was unclean can never get saved. The person that was ever covetous, ooh, how about covetous, right? We've all been guilty of that. I'm not saying they can, but what it's saying is those people who whose lives, that's who they are, that's their identity, they're not part of the kingdom of God. Now we shouldn't walk away from this saying, whew, okay, I do this, I'm saved, I'm okay. No, 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 the point is, if you can think that way, you've got a deep problem. The person who's in deep financial debt, 50,000 pounds, and somebody from the company forgives them, and they say, all right, I can now ring up another 50,000 pounds because I'll probably just be forgiven again. That person has a problem. That person doesn't realize anything. That person is not grateful. That that per, do you know what I'm saying? It is not a believer's thought of, hey, I can, I'm forgiven of all this. I can just do what I want. Those people that really uh, preach that you can lose your salvation, this is what they say. Well, um, if, if you could just do whatever you want, um, you know, without losing your salvation, you would. No, 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 no. The love of Christ constrains me. It binds me. It restricts me. We do things for the people we love. Verse 6. Let no man deceive you with vain, empty words, void of truth. There were people in that church that were teaching something awkward. And that's why I wrote about this. There were people in sin because there was, and you know what? I don't know. Maybe they had the internet back line, uh, uh, online back then uh, because you can almost find anything on the internet. And he's like, somebody has deceived you. Somebody's giving you empty words. You want to know why being a homosexual is good and why God wants you that way? You can just Google it and find it. You can find approval for any sin that you want online. And I think if Paul were here, he'd say, stop listening to those empty words. Stop being tricked by those empty words. Those are empty. Those are foolish. Because these things come with the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. And 
Be not ye therefore, what does it say? Be not ye therefore partakers with them. It says you've got to be different. You're supposed to be different. I've met so many Christians, especially those that have grown up in Christian families, who hate the goodness that they're in and just wish that they got tainted a little bit. Faith, you might be able to remember this. How long have you been a Christian? Donkey's ears. Okay. Okay. But then you'll remember this too. And you might have heard about these things. <laughs> Back in the 80s, to have a testimony, you had to go through all of this sin and all of these terrible things. And guys would go, yep, I dated a million women at one time. And uh, yeah, gold, I had gold bars and I had all this. And what they did is, man, when Christians would listen to that, they would leave going, whoo, I wish I had that life. And then they go, oh, yeah, I guess it. They really talk up all the wickedness of this world and then make people salivate. Uh, Paul wrote, I think in Romans, this shouldn't even be mentioned. It shouldn't even be spoken about. But sometimes we look at what other people have and we think, man, I'm stuck doing this. I, I, I'm going to be honest with, with you guys. Don't tell your dad this, but you guys could have a lot of money if your mom and dad would just stop giving to Christian stuff and stop having kids. <laughs> Honestly. Five. That's ridiculous. I mean, has anybody even come close to saying anything that like that to you in, in your life? Yeah. 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 We think, oh, well, what could be? What can I be if I lived in a different place? And if you ever play that game in your head, just think, yeah, what could be? I have never heard the gospel. Don't be partakers with them. You're a child of the king. There is nothing greater. There, honestly, there isn't. I, I mean, ooh, what would it be like to be a prince? Man, I, I, yeah, I might have some gadgets, but I might never have heard the gospel. Either being a child of the king is enough or it's not. And if it's not, there's a red flag here. There's a red flag. Don't be followers of the world. Walk in love in the same way Christ loved us. Right? Let's pray. Father, thank you for your great love. The love that saved the wicked and it conforms us to the image of your son who is long-suffering, who is faithful, merciful, graceful. Father, I pray for the people here and I pray for the people that are listening to this online, whether live or later on. Father, that we would determine To follow Jesus, no turning back. That we would walk circumspectly, not as fools. We would walk in a manner which becomes, which is worthy of being called a Christian and to be Christ. And where we fail, Lord, bring us quickly back to you. Through forgiveness and restoration. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.